you hope. She's so fancy, you already know. <laughs> now we're going to have a very serious discussion on this topic about the World Health Organization and a number of issues related to disease spread. As I said, the world has turned its attention to Dallas in the last few weeks with the announcement of the first American Ebola patient. And while there is much anxiety, uncertainty, and fear surrounding the disease, I want to assure everyone in the audience that Ebola is only spread through contact with bodily fluids and that the University of North Texas has been taking the situation very seriously and has containment plans already in place. We hope that we do not need them today, though. That's fine. <laughs> Shouldn't have to tell you this. Pick up on it, people. Now, the debate we're going to have is on a very serious subject. However, I am not participating in today's debate which allows me to be a little bit silly in introducing our participants. So I'm going to choose to introduce our participants by recourse to telling them some embarrassing facts, or rather facts that I made up about them. <coughs> I'm going to describe our debaters by telling you about the fictitious and strange afflictions that they all suffer from today. Let me start by introducing the invaders, I mean the British. <laughs> we'll begin with Miss Kate Brooks, who is a postgraduate student in international relations at the University of Oxford. In her work, she examines the historical evolution of conceptions of territory and international theory and practice. She also works as a consultant, as a researcher for the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia. She's the head of competitive debating at Oxford Union and a successful competitive debater. She's currently the fifth ranked speaker in Europe. This is true. This is true. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, Kate has recently been diagnosed with Stendhal Syndrome. Stendhal syndrome, if you don't know, is a crushing psychosomatic disorder that causes rapid heartbeat, dizziness, fainting, confusion, and even hallucinations when an individual is exposed to beautiful art. It's true, it actually exists. We shall not take Kate to the Dallas Museum of Art lest she end up looking like this. <laughs> Do not show her beautiful art. You like that? <laughs> Our second member from the British team is Miss Alice Coombs Huntley from the University of Bristol. She graduated with a first class degree in English and Literature, and she's hoping to continue her education for a master's degree in Victorian Literature. Alice has been involved with the English speaking union since she was a teenager, first as a member of the English World Schools team, and now as a mentor for the England team committee. As a debater, she won three national champion championships. She reached the finals of countless others and is broken at the World Schools, World Universities, and European Universities Championships. Her team was ranked fourth best in Europe in 2013. She's judged at many schools and been a competitor. Unfortunately for us, Alice has also recently contracted umbrage-itis. If you don't know, umbrage is the fictitious disease in the Harry Potter novel series that students at Hogwarts acquired after the installation of Miss Umbridge as the headmistress. It's true that Alice is a Potterhead. Also funny. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful with Alice uh, so that she doesn't get this disease and contract things. Otherwise, she'll end up looking like that. So we have to keep her away from Harry Potter incidents as much as possible. Now. For our American team, representing the University of North Texas, our first debater is Ms. Matea Ivanovich. Matea graduated from Idaho State University, ISU, with her BS in political science and a minor in women's studies. She also garnered an array of accolades. She was a three-time participant of the National Debate Tournament in the United States. She was the 11th speaker at the Harvard Tournament in 2012. She was a quarter-finalist at the 2013 University of Southern California Tournament, as well as the top speaker and the winner of the 2013 Jesuit Invitational. She teaches policy debate to high school students at Stanford, as well as the University of North Texas. Unfortunately for us, Matea has recently been diagnosed with arachibutrophobia. <laughs> She's a arachibutrophobic. What is arachibutrophobia, you say? Unfortunately, she has an overriding fear of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of her mouth. It's a real thing, y'all. Don't be worried. And who wouldn't be? You don't, want, you don't want peanut butter stuck to the top of that mouth. <laughs> Matea is joined on the American team by Hillary St. John. Hillary St. John is a second year master's student in the Department of Communication Studies. She's at the University of North Texas. She graduated from Illinois State University. Illinois State University, also ISU, just a little different ISU there on our UNT team. 
She's originally from the Chicago area and received her bachelor's degree at Illinois State University. She, her interests include conservation biology, environmental rhetoric, and environmental justice. Unfortunately for us, Hillary was recently diagnosed with arithmophobia. Arithmophobia, as you might have guessed, is the fear of numbers. The fear of numbers, it's a real thing. It's actually true. If you, if you push Hillary into this, you, she'll have an incredible fear of numbers. You can see her fleeing the scene of numbers there in that photograph. That's why she won't have a lot of statistics in her speech. Oh, oh. I have to confess, in discussing all of these made-up, fictitious, and otherwise strange diseases that we have from our debaters today to fit the theme of our Ebola debate, I myself am not exempt. I've recently been diagnosed with Witzelschut. Witzelschut is actually a neurological disorder that encourages people to make bad puns at really bad times. <laughs> up there with my patented truth-seeking glasses. So that's all of our debaters. Before we start our debate, before I introduce any more of the debate, I need your indulgence for a minute, kind audience members, because yesterday was Alice's birthday. Can we give her a Texas birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. of speeches back and forth on the topic, this House believes the World Health Organization should have the power to close borders. In our debate today, each debater will present a five-minute constructive speech, each followed by a three-minute period of cross-examination. Then I will return for a ten-minute period of audience questions, which I'll be moderating. Please raise your hand to ask questions and give every one of our participants the opportunity to answer the question. Finally, at the end of our debate, each side will be offered a five-minute closing statement. Now, these sides will discuss differing arguments for and against the World Health Organization being able to close borders, and I encourage your audience participation. If you hear a good point, let the debaters know. Give a little rap on the desk. You can do it. If you hear an argument that you disagree with, be fair. it's fair to, to moan or say, for shame, for shame. That'll make our friends from Oxford and Bristol feel right at home, I believe me. For our debate today, you can also participate online using the hashtag UNTBritDebate. I know some folks are tuning in over the internet. Join us there. Please keep in mind that the arguments presented today may or may not be the views of the speakers. In order to have a civil discussion, you may hear persons defending arguments that they do not necessarily believe in. From time to time, in the name of argument, all debaters play a part of the devil's advocate. So in tonight's debate, this afternoon's debate, the British debaters will be affirming the topic. With all that being said, it's my pleasure to introduce Alice as the Prime Minister for this afternoon's debate. Please join me in welcoming Alice. Alice. 